Hello, this is Kyle, also known as Alien Tude, and today I have something of a different video for you. Something of a sneak peek of some videos I'm going to be releasing in the next coming months. What I have here is an LK Chen sword. Now, LK Chen's rep, KK, generously arranged to send me eight different swords of their make for to do some videos on. These swords are loners, I don't get to keep them, and they have made their rounds through a good number of other hands from other YouTube channels and other reviewers, that kind of thing. So none of them are pristine. In fact, some of them are have definitely have some flaws developed, some rust spots, some looseness here and there. And overall, I don't think that they're in a condition to do full formal reviews. So instead, I'm going to be doing kind of informal reviews on them, maybe some cutting videos, just give my thoughts and impressions on the different swords. I do also have two other LK Chen swords, the Yanling Dao, which is my wife's, that's going to get a full review, and also a loner that is new, that is going to be reviewed pretty soon, actually. So let's take a look at the different swords that I have in my possession and just very, very brief initial thoughts. This is the Magnificent Chu Jian, and it retails new for $395. And right out of the gate, this is a gorgeous sword. I mean, the scabbard is beautiful. There's a lot of geometry on it with kind of double fullers and kind of an octagonal shape. And it's just a beautiful sword. It's, it feels nimble, but definitely because there's so little weight back here, it definitely has some point presence to it. And I'm really looking forward to trying this one. I love long swords, arming swords, and this would be basically be pretty similar to a Chinese arming sword. Next up, we have this military Don Dao. Now this would probably be the one of the more recent uh, from history swords that you would have seen, for, you would see from LK Chen. It's definitely not ancient and good Lord, this thing is a beast. I don't know how well you can see it, but look at how thick that spine is. This thing is a powerful sword and yeah, I don't, it's not particularly fun to move around one-handed. Two-handed feels much better. But this thing feels like it's going to be a heavy chopper. Not the nimbleness that I would typically associate with Chinese martial arts, but then I am not at all uh, really familiar with Chinese martial arts, so I could very well be wrong. But man, this thing is notably different than almost all the other swords that LK Chen sent me because it's just big, imposing, and feels like a beast. One interesting thing about this one though is that it sells for only $210. For a maker of LK Chen's reputation, that's a heck of a good price for a fully functional sword. Next up, we have the Grand Marshal Ming Jian, which retails for $375. I want to real quickly say I apologize if I butcher any of these Chinese words. I am not good at pronouncing it. This is, I, I picked, when I was un unboxing these and taking them out, this was the first one I was, I really just went, ooh, with the, how it feels. There's a lot more weight to it back here with these quite large fittings. And that really does bring the balance back some and make this feel incredibly nimble. I am really looking forward to getting a chance to taking this out and moving it around, maybe cutting with it. I'm not sure yet because this guard is pretty loose, but I wanna to try to get some cuts in because I think this is gonna be a very fun sword to use. But, you know, I'm gonna be repeating this often. These swords are all beautiful. Even the more, the simple ones, it's amazing just how beautiful these swords are, even if they don't have a lot of geometry or anything to them. They're just really attractive swords. I really commit, and LK Chen for, really taking aesthetics into the into consideration when they design their swords and making sure that they look good as well as function well. Next up is this Double Dragon Sui Dao, which sells for $378. This one, you see that kind of binds in the scabbard a little bit. And again, beautiful sword. Uh, this tassel, I'll tell you, this tassel bothers me. I, I don't like having this ring right in the middle of the grip and the tassel just bugs me. I and I just moving this around a little bit. I feel that ring in my grip. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to hold it where that sits in the palm. 
not sure exactly, but it just, it kind of bothers me in this little movement, moving it around I've done. Once I get around to really gain more impressions of it, I'm gonna try to really figure out the correct way to hold the sword so it hopefully doesn't bother me. But yeah, this is kind of reminiscent of a straight bladed katana to me in that it's got that single edge. It's kind of got kind of a kasaki shape, a grip that would, theoretically you could grip two hands on here, but this, I don't think you would really want to put much torque on. So you'd have to really bunch your hands up there. But yeah, this feels pretty good other than that ring and tassel in the middle. I'm looking forward to cutting with this one as well. Although the edge bevel is pretty short, so it'll be interesting to see how that cuts. Next up is the Dragon Sparrow Hidden Hilt Dao, which sells for $295. This one I have done some cutting with, and I can say it can be tricky to get this out because the, this part binds quite a bit. And this is kind of one of the things I was talking about when saying that I don't know that these really are appropriate for full reviews because they've just seen so much use and potentially abuse that I'm not sure I could really say that this is what you would get if you bought one new. But what I will say is this was actually quite a bit of fun to cut with. It's light and maneuverable, but definitely has some point weight to it, some authority in the cut. It's got absolutely nothing stopping your blade, your hand running up the blade. So thrusts, I'm never going to try thrusting with this. And it's a little intimidating just even thinking about cutting with it. I really want to make sure I have a very good grip on this sword. I will say though, that you ain't seen nothing yet when it comes to that kind of concern. Another thing I've noticed that's just a little tricky is that when you look at the mouth of the scabbard, there's no real way to know which way the blade goes in. You just kind of have to either remember which edge, if the edge goes up here or down here, or try it and here it starts binding. I think I put it in wrong. Yep. So I just need to remember the edge goes away from whatever these are. <laughs> Next up is the Royal Arsenal Hondao which sells for $265. I also did some cutting with this one at the same time as the previous. And this is just so light, so nimble. I feel like this, I feel like I could use this left-handed even, and I am terrible with my left hand. I don't wanna to do too much, my left elbow is balking a little bit, but yeah, this is just so light, so nimble, just a joy to move around. This feels like, uh, everyday carry uh, gentleman sword kind of to me. I don't know at all how accurate that is to uh, Chinese culture and everything, but that's what this feels like. This feels like kind of like a European hunting sword, just light, nimble, very easy to move around, very easy to carry. It looks like it might have a slight recurve to it, which is really cool. I like seeing blades that have some recurve. and. It cuts pretty well too. I, like I said, I did do a little bit of cutting. I'm gonna do some more later on, but I do really like this sword. I I've immediately fell in love with just how compact it is. And lastly, we have two different versions of the Heavenly Horse Calvary Hondao, which sells for $285. I don't remember off the top of my head which of these models is the one that's currently available. And I have to actually put them down to take them uh, out of the scabbards because this scabbard is splitting quite a bit. So give me just a moment to do that. So take a look at these massive blades, not in terms of width, but just length. These are very, very long swords. This one has a bit more recurve to it than this one, but they both do have some. And remember what I was saying about you ain't seen nothing about? Uh, hand protection, there is absolutely none here. I will certainly never even try any kind of stabs with this because these swords are scary to me because they're, they're so stripped down to just blade and a, a very, very minimal grip. I was, When I saw these, I was like, I'm going to need to be very, very careful when I do cutting with them because yeah, they are, there, there's some worry there that my hand could easily slip up and touch the edge and they are very sharp all the way to the end. So 
that, that, that's a little bit of a concern for me. So that was a little sneak peek of the various swords that I have on loan to me from LKHN that you're going to be seeing videos going forward in the next few months. I don't know exactly how often I'll be able to get them out. I'm kind of squeezing in uh, work on these videos in the downtime between my reviews, which is not a lot of downtime. So it's, it's kind of tricky to fit them in, but I definitely do want to get them in because I want to put out videos on these. I think they're all worthy of a video and I want to thank LK Chen for allowing me to loan them. And I think there's some good things to learn from experience using swords that aren't just in my wheelhouse, which is generally speaking European swords. Getting a chance to handle and move around swords from a completely different culture, from a completely different style of martial arts is really interesting and educational. I hope you like these videos coming up and until then, Alien Toot out.